All right, so now we're going to be talking about all of the stats, points, numbers, variables, all the good stuff that you've probably been waiting for this whole entire time in this video. But first, I need a beer. So let's go ahead and start with, well, the beers. Now, like I said, I had 201 beers. But when I say beers, I mean individual beers. I'm not necessarily counting what size of beers. Now, if you go and search what is a single serving of beer, they'll tell you it is a 12 ounce bottle or serving of a 5% beer. This beer right here, well, does not hit that. It's 6.7, technically a little above a single serving. Now, a lot of my beers, because they had to be higher calorie, were a lot higher ABV. But I really wasn't going to get into the math of that aspect because I would have had to have looked up 201 individual ABVs, and I wasn't going to keep that record. But what I did keep was the ounce count of each individual bottle of beer I drank. Now, a lot of them I drank 16 ounces, I drank 19.5 ounces, or I drank a big 22 bottle. So a total ounce count wise was 2,810 ounces. We can add a couple more now. So what does that mean? Well, if we were to take every 12 ounces and count that as an individual serving of beer, I had 234 servings of beer. How many people do you know that can do that in a row? That's right. That's a lot of beer. So here's another interesting stat on the cost of this beer diet. Remember I put that in quotes, okay? Is that I stated this cost $500 in total of purchasing beer. Now you can go ahead and deduct the $20 in deposit that you're gonna get back from the 201 beers I drank. Technically, I have about $60 left in my fridge, but I also drank beers that were already purchased so i kind of like balanced it out and uh 480 is what it cost me end of the six weeks okay so that equated to two dollars and 39 cents per meal okay i didn't have three meals a day it ranged between three to five meals a day but still it averaged out to two dollars and 39 cents a meal so then I had an interesting thought about this diet that how much would it cost to actually be on a diet and have, you know, health food shipped to you, given to you, however, prepped for you, you know, those delivery services that everything was given to you, just like a beer is prepped and ready and given to you. I found some interesting stats. So I found the average cost of six different food services ranging from regular food to specialty diet food. So we have Purple Carrot Food Service averages a $10 to $12 per serving. Trifecta Nutrition Food Services, which is a keto food diet, which actually was what my body went through, is a $13 to $15 per serving. Bistro MD comes in at $9 to $13 per serving. Factor 75 comes in at $11 to $15 per serving. Blue Apron comes in at $9 to $10 per serving. And probably one of the more popular ones is Nutrisystem comes in a little bit different because it was kind of hard to figure out. But it comes in at $16.96 per day for a seven day all meals prepped. That averages to $5.65 per serving. Now you have to remember that all of these services, you have to order a minimum of at least one month's worth of food. So you have to actually order two months worth to reach that six and a half week equivalent. So you're gonna go over. So this is actually, for cost, pretty darn cheap. Again, beer diet, quotations, okay? So understand that. So here's probably what you all came and wanted to really see is what did I lose in my weight and body transformation? How did I look? 
So at the start of this on March 2nd, I weighed in at 195.8 pounds. And over the course of 46 days, I lost a total of 31.2 pounds, as you can see here. Now at the end of this, I wanted to see, did anything happen to my body? So I went and did a blood work panel and a liver and kidney panel and to see if I saw anything abnormal. And actually there were some surprising things that went on. Now my blood work came back extremely normal. So that was good. But it was the liver and kidney panel that had some interesting things. Now when my liver and kidney panel came back with some irregularities, uh, I wanted to talk to my doctor about it. So I gave her a call, we had a little chat, and she took a look at the stats, and she was extremely surprised at the results when I told her what I've been doing. Now when my BUN and creatine levels came back below normal, my doctor was actually extremely surprised, stating that someone who's going through a malnourished period in their life shouldn't see this. In fact, they should actually see an increase in this. They were actually quite surprised, saying that this was extremely good. Now they weren't extremely dangerously low levels, but they were just, you know, at the mark of being marked red and below. Now when my phosphorus and albumin came above normal, she looked at that and also stated, that's really good. Essentially what it is, is it's saying you're extremely hydrated and your body has too much vitamins in it. And when she looked at it, they were only a 0.1 over the number. So she really wasn't that concerned but when these tests even go that above, the computer's gonna come back and say, yeah, it's irregular. So let's talk about what happened to me after this diet and the few days after that. Now, as you know, this diet ends just before Easter. And well, most people that do celebrate Easter celebrate it with a big meal. Well, ending something like this, you can't just go in and be like, I'm gonna go eat a cheeseburger and have a fatty steak and it's so fine. No, all of your stomach, all of your digestive juices, everything, your enzymes, there's nothing inside of you. You have cleansed your body of every chemical possible, except hop, barley, malt, and yeast. <laughs> so the research that I did and from the information that I got from my friends and my other colleague who did this, Dale. Uh, shout out to him, he's been doing this for I believe this is fifth year. So cheers to you, buddy. Now with all this information that I got, it was essentially you gotta go slow, you gotta take it easy, uh, light foods. Um, and so my first meal ever was just a light chicken broth noodle soup, essentially. I needed, wanted just a little bit of carbs, but it was just noodles and chicken broth. You know, that was it. Oh my gosh, it was so delicious. It was like the best tasting thing ever. And when I say best tasting thing ever, imagine going to the snow and playing in it for like eight to 10 hours and you're just freezing and your body's soaking wet and you're frozen to the core and your bones are just shaking and you go inside and you have that cheap 25 packet of powdered hot cocoa with just some hot water and you sip it down and you know it's disgusting and you know it's not even good cocoa but you drink it and it just is the best most delicious warming sensation into your body it just fills you up that's what that soup tasted like so good 
and it felt great. I had no problem with it the following day, no stomach issues, nothing that night, slept like a baby, felt fantastic. So the following day, going into Easter thinking, okay, I just have to take it easy. I'm not gonna eat a whole lot. Um, I'll probably have like two tablespoons of like a mashed potato, uh, some plain corn chips or some crackers. Um, nothing, nothing too big, right? Nothing bad at all. So in the morning I had some toast, felt great. And I prepped for a big family meal going into it. And that afternoon, uh, I started just little snacks here and there, but still, kept my beer with me. So I knew I needed to still have some form of calories because I was being busy. And then came the meal. Now we had a very wonderful roast, mashed potatoes, and you know, just the, the typical stuffings of, you know, glorious gluttonous amounts of food. And my plate was not very big. In fact, it was like a 10 inch saucer plate that I used. But I put just a little bit of everything and thinking I'm not gonna eat a whole lot, but I just wanna try it because my taste buds are just salivating and waiting and I could not wait to just try something. And that's where things started to go downhill quickly. The roast, extremely delicious. But my father-in-law who prepped it told me it was a fantastic roast full of fat that got rendered down and was soaking in its own fats. And then he took that fat and rendered it down and used it to make the gravy that was on my two tablespoons of mashed potatoes. Um, and then there were just a couple of other processed chemical things that I probably should not have had. And my stomach from the time of eating that meal erupted in a fiery volcano of I don't like what you're doing to me. Essentially, I was building a powdered keg of an explosion and it did not want to come out the front end, if I can put it in the most gentle way as possible. So that night, starting around 9.30 p.m., I took my position upon the throne and did not leave it for more than two minutes at a time till 4 a.m. I could have sworn I probably released what felt like two gallons of liquid coming out of me. Luckily, I have a very wonderful and gracious wife who woke up early and rushed to the store and bought me everything that I should have been eating for the next couple of days coming off of something like this. Yeah, those next couple of days after Easter were not fun. It does wane off pretty quickly, but the fool I was on that one aspect of this thing. Think of it like having really bad flu and then you just had food poisoning on top of it. It's gonna take a couple days for your body to just get back to normal. Now, you also do gain quite a bit of weight back after this and that can kind of mess with your psyche a little bit, but you also have to understand you're in a keto malnourished state and you have just basically taken away everything from your body and then you're starting to reintroduce stuff and it takes your body a lot of effort to digest that. So I gained roughly around seven to nine pounds back within the first two weeks. Um, and then that weight fluctuated up and down, up and down, and it started to normalize in that, just like what you do in a normal day to day. You know, you weigh yourself one week and you weigh three pounds, and then you weigh yourself a week later and you're like down two pounds, and then you weigh yourself the following week and you're like up one pound. It took about two to three weeks and then you basically come back to being your normal self again. So all in all, this is not a 46 day process and then you can just flip the switch and be going right back to normal. It is essentially a 60 day process, starting this, going through this body transformation and then returning to normal. Now going through this and looking back at it, I could say one would probably get the equivalent experience of doing this for roughly about 39 to 46 days. That last week, is horrible it is so hard to do and i don't know if it is just that feeling of i'm at the end and i just want to be done um but i really felt that the 30 day mark i was like okay i'm pretty much here and then it was you know the 37 day mark like yeah this is about as much as i'm going to get out of it and that's when things were just like yep that's that's where i felt the best so that is the end 
of my beer only diet for 46 days. Did I miss any stats or information that you were wondering about? Did I hit something that you were curious and didn't think would actually happen? Or you're like, that is impossible. I would love to know in the comments below. So let me know what you think. Would you even try something like this for yourself? Let me know. See you guys in the next one.